Hey everybody, it's just eight o'clock right now. I'm Miriam Dotson with Island Hopper Songwriter Fest and we are so excited that you are joining us right now for a good evening of some live music and some chatting behind the songs from Ruthie Collins tonight. So we're so excited to talk to her. I think you're gonna be uh, surprised with maybe where she's coming from. A little sweet treat coming up in a little bit. Um, of course, this is all for in preparation of Island Hopper Songwriter Fest that's gonna be happening in September. It is on. We are three months away from today. So we are gearing up and really excited about it. We also want to give a big hello and shout out to our media partners, iHeartMedia and Cat Country 107.1. So hello to you guys and to BMI as well as we work together to put on this virtual concert series to be able to still give you some great live music from home, from the comfort of your own home and ours as well. So just wanted to give you a couple of... Um, housekeeping issues, if you will. If you're joining us for the first time, um, you may be able to see some comments in places where you can drop a line wherever you're joining us. Please feel free to go ahead and do so. We would love to hear from you if you have any questions or anything like that. So we're just giving everybody a second here to hop on and be able to join us so you can enjoy a nice Thursday evening at home and listening to some music. So um, Ruthie Collins, if you have not heard of her, you are missing out. So if for any first time listeners tonight, we want to welcome you for that too. But um, of course, you can find out tons of information on our website at islandhopperfest.com. But um, she is actually a, an original northerner. She is from Fredonia, New York and grew up on a farm. So she's got a very interesting background. Um, but of course, she's caught so much attention for her beautiful, soulful voice and um just awesome songwriting that we're going to hear tonight as well. So um, she was actually um, moved to Nashville after college, where she spent five years writing songs and waiting tables. I always love to hear about people's backstories and their first jobs before hitting it big. So um, she's also been named CMT's prestigious Next Women of Country series to that list. So that's a big nod, of course. And um, she started turning heads immediately with festivals and things like that. So that's why we're super excited to have her join us for Island Hopper coming up in September. But for now, we want to introduce her for tonight as she'll be joining us here any second. There she is, Ruthie Collins. Hi. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for having me. This is so fun. Oh, it's so good to see you. So I was kind of teasing a little bit about where people will be maybe surprised to see where you're coming to us from. So um, we couldn't help but notice this really cool sheet okay. background. Where are you right now? I'm in my 1973 Airstream. That's so awesome. Mm -hmm. So you've got, uh, do you have an old soul? Would you say you're kind of? Um, For sure. Yeah. yeah. All things vintage. Uh, new modern is fun, but um, yeah, give me. Give me something old always, unless yes. it's <laughs> I feel like people like that who you've got this kind of special eye for things, you've got this gift of music that you were almost sometimes maybe meant for a different time, but yet we've been gifted with you to have us here now to bring it all together. So we're so excited to see you. We hope you've been doing well. We've been following you for the past year and you've been bringing that Airstream. Did you name it? Does it have a name? This Airstream is named Amelia Airstream. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Love it. Yep. How did she get her name? Well, we were doing the renovations and just couldn't figure out what to name her. And I wanted to name her after a strong woman. And um, it was actually one of the contractors was like, what about Amelia? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, Amelia Earhart. And I was like, Amelia Airstream. So yeah, yes. yeah, it just felt right. That is so awesome. So you um, come from some a, a cold weather state, if you will, right? I do, yes. Uh, grew up very close to Buffalo, right on Lake Erie. So I'm familiar with lake effect snow. And mm -hmm. I feel like snow is for skiing and Christmas. And other than that, I can, I can take it or leave it. Yeah. So how was the transition to Nashville and adjusting to a new, new whole new lifestyle? Yeah, I love living in Nashville. I actually moved to Texas very briefly um, before coming to Nashville. So I got used to the heat really quick that way because I was in San Antonio. Um, but Nashville, it, honestly, the country in Nashville doesn't look that much different from where I'm from. It's kind of like rolling hills and very rural. So I always felt right at home here. Yeah. So we were talking a little bit ahead of time um, that maybe you're ready for some warm weather. So we're excited to have you in September. And what's really cool about this, for anybody just hopping on, um, this will not be your first time to Island Hopper or to our area, Captiva. What do you remember about it? What are you looking forward to the most about coming back down to our area? Well, all the festivals I've ever played have been BMI festivals, as far as the songwriter ones. So I, I feel like I won't get in trouble for saying this, but Captiva is my favorite festival that I've ever played with BMI. Um, it's, it's kind of like it has that 
small town feel to it where everything is close and beautiful. Um, but it's, it's just amazing. My favorite memory, I did it twice, both of the years I was there. Also the people that come to this festival, they are so nice. Everyone is so kind. And um, so people were so welcoming that I think two years in a row we went out on a boat and got to go to that place uh, where they have that random restaurant with all the dollar bills on the walls. And we'll Cabbage Key. Yes. Cabbage Key is my favorite yes. place in the world. Um, so I just, it's like real life dirty dancing, right? That little yep. resort out there. So that was so special. Um, but just, yeah, the way that the community members just kind of like took you under their wings and they just loved music and they were so happy you were there. And it's just, my God, that's just so stunningly beautiful and you yeah. get to just your music and meet new people. So it's, yeah. it's my favorite festival I've ever played. I'm thrilled to be coming back. Oh, good. We're so happy to hear that. And thanks for the nod to all the people, for anybody oh, joining you from the area. It's always about the people, right? It's always I about so many of them on Instagram when we talk. And so I'm so excited to come back. And all right, cool. Fun. Well, we do have some um, people jumping on right now. We're just going to say hello to Kelly, Aaron, Andrew, Craig. Um, Andrew says everyone say hello to Amelia Airstream. So Amelia can have her own identity here as well. So, um, and again, anybody who wants to make any any comments or questions, feel free to drop a line and we want to be interactive with you too. So, because uh, remember, it's all about, you know, the people and getting everybody involved. So you've been busy making some new music and you've got some songs to play for us tonight. So um, the first one you're going to play, it was still going to be Joshua Tree, right? Yes. yes. Okay. So I was reading that Joshua Tree, um, the, the, the area in California is one of the most meaningful places to you that kind of inspires your music and you. How come? What, what is that so special? What is that so special to you? You know, what's so weird is I was never really a desert gal. Um, until just a few years ago, I wrote this song and I'm such a huge Emmylou Harris fan. I had heard the story that, I just dropped my phone, sorry. I heard the story that um, she said, and I can't even tell you if this is true. I just found it on Pinterest linked to this random article and I had never heard this, but she had said that she was about to tell Graham Parsons that she was in love with him, um, but they were about to go back out on the road. Now Graham discovered Emmylou. So he was the one who found her singing in this little bar and then he took her into his band and she started touring with him and that's how her whole career started. So she said that, you know, this is years into their relationship that she was about to tell him that she was in love with him, um, but they were about to go back out on the road and she didn't want to tell him over the phone. She's like, I'll see him in three weeks. So she waited and then unfortunately and tragically, Graham passed away in the Joshua Tree Inn. Um, he overdosed in 1973 and she never got the chance to tell him. And as just such a huge Emmy Lou Harris fan, it was almost just like it ripped my heart on my chest. I couldn't believe that this woman that I just looked up to so much had experienced something so tragic. It just like it really struck a chord with me. So I wrote this song about that and called Joshua Tree. I had never been to Joshua Tree. So then I was like, well, now I have to go. I have the song. And then everything changed. And I was like, this is just one of the most incredible places energetically, spiritually, this landscape is like nothing a Buffalo girl had ever seen before, right? I was like, am I on Mars? Um, so yeah, now I'm just obsessed and I go as often as I can. So I think I've been like six or seven times now since I wrote the song. We filmed the music video for this. And we actually filmed it in the room that Graham Parsons died in. Oh, wow. Oh my goodness. That just must make your music so much more you know, meaningful. And it just hearing that the way you're talking about it too, going to those locations and doing it there just takes it to a totally different level. So it does that's sort of art imitating life, imitating art. I'm not sure who this song is even about anymore. Sometimes, you know, it's really yeah. kind of part of me and my story. So yeah. yeah, the first single off of the record I just released called Cold Comfort. So. Right. I was going to say, this is the first song that you're putting out. All right. So, um, so let's hear that. So without further ado, let's hear Joshua Tree and we'll come back and chat about it after. All right. Here it is. I was young and you were too. The world was spinning twice as fast. When it stopped, I was singing in the bar that you ran. And I loved you from the first before chorus back to verse. But I never told you that. Will you meet me? Catch fire to the sky Where the Colorado desert Grows 
sister, well, I've been lying. Will you say my name like hallelujah? Love me like you're free. Baby, meet me. Baby, meet me. It's just so We've been keeping every lie we didn't tell And every moment we don't bet And everybody but ourselves Let them fall down like a ring And never falls down in this place Come to me, my darling And I'll tell you face to face Will you meet me where a million stars catch fire to the sky? Beautiful, beautiful, Ruthie. That is awesome. So when you were writing that song, I mean, take us to your writing place. Is it something you were thinking of in your head for a while before you put it on paper or how did that go? Yeah, I just had this, I heard that story, like I told you guys, and I and I just had this like, meet me in Joshua Tree, baby, meet me in Joshua Tree. Will you meet me in Joshua That just kind of kept going through my head. And I was like, I, I don't even understand what, what this is. Is she like trying to have a seance and connect with the spirit like what does this even mean <laughs> but it was just like that was his place and um so maybe it was like maybe that's where she would feel feel close to him you know after not mm -hmm. having her in her life for so long this is totally speculative you know like i've never talked to emmy lou about any of this <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> and i really went this this deep in the story but i felt so connected to it um so i actually had worked up like a verse and a chorus and then i have a writer here in town his name is luke sheets and um, I tend to save things that are like really special and um, really vibey for him because we've written so many great songs together and I'm just such a fan of him. Um, so I saved this one for him and called him up and said, I have this very strange idea for a song about Joshua Tree. Uh, do you want to write it? And he's like, yes. And this is what we came up with. Anytime you start something with, I have a very strange idea, it usually turns out great, right? <laughs> I actually do that a lot. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Maybe so. Um, so this song is one of many, obviously, that a lot of your fans are excited to hear um, coming up uh, for Island Hopper and for tonight for the couple of songs we get to hear. But um, how would you say, you know, we were talking earlier when you were last here, which was a couple of years ago now. And, and given the past year, so much has happened. Right. So how do you think you've grown 
personally, professionally? How has it shown maybe in your writing or in your music over the past couple of years? When, when you get down, you know, you, you said this song is kind of special. Like, you know, you have this deep connection with it. You know, the difference between when you're really knocking it out of the park and maybe, uh, you know, working through the other ones. So um, tell us a little bit about that and sort of your growth over this time period. Oh my gosh, I almost feel like I'm a completely different person than I was the last time I played Captiva. Um, I've been through so much. I made a record called Cold Comfort that took me years to make. Um, I, I sort of got a little bit lost in the whole storyline of how radio maybe wasn't playing as much females. And um, I kind of blamed a lot in my life on that for a while. And I think it was just, you know, who knows what any of that was about. And I don't blame my record label because it was sort of a bad decision at the time, business-wise, you know, because they just weren't releasing a lot of women. And I kind of got a little stuck in that storyline. And then I just decided I got to find something to be grateful for, you know, because I have so much, right? There, there are people who would die to be me crying on my couch because I get to write songs for a living, you know? I mean, th yeah. just that alone, like what was, but you know, the, the industry can be so competitive and it can just yeah. like, beat you down and, and you can become very bitter here in Nashville. So I had to sort of revamp my entire life and my entire personality and just sort of find a way to, to feel like a little lighter and more grateful for all the amazing good that I have. And of course, when you start to do that, um, it just kind of spirals out of control and you have more good and more good and more things to be thankful for. It's just about yeah. changing your focus. So I decided I was going to make a record of just the songs that I loved and I wasn't going to really involve my label in it um, because at this point it was sort of a luxury, right? They weren't paying attention. So I was like, well, I can just do whatever I want. Um, so I ended up putting this record out uh, April 6, 2020, which my timing was not great, but <laughs> nothing so going on at that time. Yeah, I don't know. Um, everything obviously was canceled, but um, I'm still so proud of the record. And uh, it was just such an amazing experience where I got to really just sing the songs that my heart wanted to sing and not focus on like what a CEO wanted to hear or what mm -hmm. someone at radio even would want to hear. So I, I got this beautiful experience of, of getting to step back as an artist and just do what my soul wanted to sing. So just that perspective has changed everything. Yeah. Now it's so exciting because Curb actually loved the record and got so excited about it that they're like, okay, we want to put a country's radio single out, which is what I wanted the whole time. So um, mm -hmm. it's amazing how that happens when you just, you know, you focus on being thankful for what you have. And then you, it's just, I can't, I can't say it enough. I'm, I'm so lucky. Um, and I'm so happy that I made that switch in my mind. So now um, the next song that I'm going to play is actually my single going out to country radio in 2021. So I'm just okay. so excited back in the game. <laughs> yes, yes. It's exciting because I'm coming to see you guys and obviously love my heart. So I know. And, and I'm so excited. A little sneak peek of any country radio stations. Nobody's heard this. Yes. And I always wonder how you stay true to yourself in that business and industry. And, you know, you have such a talent and such a gift. And it's like, how do I get the world to really understand me and with all this noise around me? So it's always interesting to hear that perspective because so many people would look at you and everybody watching right now who's just, you know, raving and lots of good emojis. I'm seeing heart emojis and claps and um Jim, I've been following Ruthie for years and she continues to evolve for the better. You know, um, from the outside, we may think, okay, everyone's a fan. Everyone's a fan. But, you know, are you a fan of yourself in the middle of all of that, too, and staying true to that, you know? I mean, I'm like a freak about it. I put in like two to four hours of what I call soft education every day. If I don't do my morning routine, which is very involved and it's like meditation, my gratitude journal, um, I'm usually reading some sort of help, self-help book. Like I do Kundalini yoga. I go for a walk every day, get this little sunshine on my face. Yeah. I, if I don't do that for three days, I always joke things start falling from the sky on me. Yeah. Like, just, that's the only way I can survive in this industry because it is so cutthroat. And so you just get lost with wanting what someone else has. And, you know, it's it can be really, really competitive, obviously. But I always realize, well, something I've learned is that, you know, just because some, somebody else has something that you want, you might find that like you have that ping of jealousy, but just, that just means that's a signal from the universe. Like that's something that I would like to have in my life. And I'm so happy they have it. And now there's my signal that I need to be working towards getting that, you know, it doesn't have yeah. to be like, I don't, I don't want yeah. that, but, you know, and yeah, you know, it tends to be in the music industry at any time someone else has success. It, it's sort of hard to celebrate. It's like, no, we need to celebrate everything because that's how you get more to celebrate. Exactly. And it's okay to give a compliment to someone and say, you know, I got something up my sleeve too, you know, and, and try to find that support. Yes. Yes. Because they need it too. We all do. We all, we all do. do. Okay. You said your next song you're going to play for us is, um, tell me the title again. 
This song is called Hypocrite. Mm. Okay, listening. <laughs> Take it away. <laughs> I wrote this song actually in this Airstream. Um, I was having some communication issues with a boy that I was very fond of. And um, I was sitting in my Airstream, which was at that time parked in my best friend's driveway. Um, Natalie Stovall, she's in that Runaway June band. You guys know them. They're mm -hmm. amazing. He's just an angel and the best. And I was uh, having a little, a little emotional time in the Airstream trying to write this song. It started coming out of me, and I just texted her, and I was like, can you please come out to your driveway and write this song with me? I don't think I can do it by myself. It came out. She's like, you got the whole thing pretty much finished. You don't need me. And I was like, I need you for emotional support at least. Like, just please to help me with the second verse and be here for me. So she's, like I said, she's an angel. Um, so we wrote this song together. And this is the one that Kurt picked for the next single. So obviously I'm so thrilled about that. And I was kind of, you know, hoping that it would be this one too. So yeah, this is called Hypocrite. All right. I'm the girl that you call when you need a friend I'm the one who can talk you off a ledge Yeah, I'm the one you count on I've memorized how to find the light in yourself I can shine so bright for anyone else Oh, and so I say that I find and I lie To everyone I see, I swear that I've made it through And losing you didn't almost destroy me But baby, I'm really a hypocrite I tell my friends I'm sick of it And I'm taking off your love just like a temporary tattoo but I'm a little hypocrite Cause I'm still in a thick of it Cross my heart and I'm so over it But I am still in love with you I'm the girl who deserves more than you can give I've walked away for so much less than this Be you're the one I want Another girl who can let go of anything is staying home with a ghost of what could have been. And baby, I'm so haunted. Cause I'm a little hypocrite. I tell my friends I'm sick of it. And I'm taking off the love just to like a temporary tattoo. But I'm a little hypocrite. I'm still in a thick of it Cross my heart, I'm so good And I'm still in love with you Baby, I'm your little hypocrite. I swear to God, I am so sick of this. Cause I'm your little hypocrite. I tell my friends I'm sick of it. And I'm taking off your love to select a temporary tattoo. But I'm your little hypocrite. I'm still in the thick of it Cross my heart and I'm so over it Cause I'm still in love with you And at the night with my dying breath But I'm still in love with you Yes. Boy, that was that was raw, right? That was a good <laughs> self-examination. <laughs> Always. We're about to shoot the music video for it in like two weeks. Oh, okay. Can you tell us anything about it? Any any sneak previews? I'll tell you. I might show up uninvited somewhere. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. I don't like to spoil things. I really don't. I know when people want to get the scoop, but I like to leave things to yeah. Yeah. surprise and have fun and keep following it. But um, well, that song will probably be on repeat for many people going through some problems. So thank you for your brutal honesty with that song too. It's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Um, on the flip side of things, um, you know, there's so many sides to you, Ruthie, and you're in your Airstream. I'm seeing the greenery behind you. Um, you're a big DIYer too, right? So project. <laughs> yes, you're always on a project of some kind. Have you always had that skill? What are you renovating these days? And didn't you um, renovate one of the, was it, did a you van? renovate the Airstream or the, a van? <laughs> did renovate the Airstream. And then recently I was thinking about like, oh, it was actually during COVID. I was like, oh, I really want to get on the road and play some outdoor shows and maybe in some areas where it's safe to do so. And the Airstream is just really tucked in really cozily at my house right now and the thought of like going out and buying a truck and hitching it all up by myself I was like maybe that's a little bit much for me right now and so I got really into van life on Instagram and I was like I gotta do it but in true me fashion right I couldn't like go get a new one that wouldn't have any issues I had to buy a 1989 GMC Vandora because it honestly looks like a country like 70s country western singers dream in there it's all pink velvet and wood it's so that's cute awesome. <laughs> Ellie Rose and I've been working on her since about November. So yeah, she's, she's, she has a few more projects, but I'm almost done with her um, now. But yeah, I'm, I've always got a project. Always. Yeah. Like and that's another thing too, that um, you can learn things and learn some, you know, ways around renovating things, but that's a bit of a gift too, because you must have patience. I don't. <laughs> um, <laughs> more patience and it's gotten me in trouble sometimes on the projects because you do have to have patience I'll be like, I just want it to be done you know and I maybe don't do it yeah I've learned that along the way um but yeah I just grew up with it my grandparents always had a project my mom always has a project my dad's a little bit better about it but yeah my grandparents they were at my house growing up every weekend because we had their farm that my grandma had grown up on then right. my mom went to the house so we had this giant far uh garden there so they were there and my grandpa's shop was there and he used to make like wood toys and all kinds of furniture so i get a lot from him as well but this so they spent every waking moment on the farm in the garden working so you could never ever like relax you always had to be doing some kind of project so now i kind of abide by that still in my life if it's like farmer's hours yeah like, like I can't, I have to be doing something, but if, as soon as the sun goes down, I can be like, oh, okay, I can have a cup of you know, tea and watch some Netflix. But yeah, I definitely still have that. Yeah, always tending to something, right? Like something always needs to be yeah. worked in. So. I'm working on it. That's part of my, what I, want, I was telling you earlier, I want to move to Florida. Mm -hmm. it's like the water is very healing to me and that kind of lets me slow down and yes for a second yeah you can't help it when you come here when you come down to captiva we're gonna go you know we'll show you some little extra spots too where it is watching, you have to go get your tickets right now i'm telling you it is paradise yes it's it so is fun. it's so fun and i just feel like the size of it is a little more manageable than like a yeah. qs i love qs don't get me wrong but yeah. it's just so manageable you can just float around and go see all the music it's so yep fun. And you can get different vibes. You have Captiva, you have Fort Myers Beach, and you have downtown, which is more yeah. of a historic district. So it's really a lot to choose from. So yeah. anybody watching or just hearing this buzz about what Island Hopper is, trust me, you don't want to miss it. It's really cool. So, so really, you got two more songs for us yeah. to play. Um, Beg, Steal, and Borrow, or Beg, Steal, Borrow, I should say, yeah. is the name of uh, the next song. Um, tell us a little bit about it right before you, you play for us. This is a song I wrote about a relationship I was in a couple years ago. Um, and the guy I wrote it about actually showed up halfway through I was writing it. And I was like, you wanna hear what I'm working on? And he was like, yeah. And I played it for him. He's like, that's so great. It's really great. Meanwhile, you know, I was like breaking my heart at the same time. I'm just trying to keep my cool. And he was like, yeah, you know what the second verse should be? And I was like, what? And he's like, where are you going? Can I tag along? My hands here for holding, if that's what you want. And then he like puts a cigarette out and leaves. And I was like, come back. <laughs> I, <love you. laughs> so, yeah. I ended up giving him co-writing credit on this song. I was like, oh, you are, but yeah, this song, I, I listen to it now and sometimes I struggle like with how far I've come because the girl in the song is not in her worth. Not at all. She's taken scraps. And, um, but we all have to learn those lessons and learn boundaries and learn uh, what we're valuable, you know, how valuable we are, and especially in relationships. So it's kind of nice at the same time I can look back at it and sort of celebrate the growth there. Yeah, yeah. So this is Peg Steel Borrow. All right. This is the last song on Cold Comfort. This is what we close the record with.
What are you doing? If it's no bother, could I come over? Hide under your covers. I swear I won't ask much. I've learned how to beg, steal, borrow your Here for oldie, if that's what you want. Only need one little touch. I've learned how to be steal and borrow your love. I've learned how to be satisfied. The faded disguise of your heart. I know how to skim from the top, squeeze the water for up, eager for notes, just who you are. So what are you feeling? So hard to see, but just for one moment, were you thinking? I me. Mean. So what are you doing? If it's no bother, could I come over? Hide under your covers. I swear I won't ask much. I learned how to be steal. And borrow your love. Beautiful, beautiful, yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Um, somebody commented while you were just wrapping up there saying the that are you thinking of me line just hits me right in the heart every time. So that was you can feel that one. That was great, Ruthie. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, okay, so you have another song for us as well, yeah, um, yeah. and Cold Comfort is the name of your latest album. How did you come up with the title? And tell us a little bit about it. I know we talked a little bit and how it kind of shows a little more vulnerability. Oh, gosh, this is not an easy listening record. And by that, I mean, like, you you might cry. Um, but it was interesting. Like, like I said, I was trying to just record the songs that my heart felt like they needed to record. In my life, personally, things got a little serious. And I just felt like I couldn't sing a whole record's worth of songs about drinking beer and going out on Friday night. As much as I love those things, like I just, it got too real. That's the only way I can put it. And um, so this whole record are those songs. And it was really interesting to me that I was worried it was gonna be too vulnerable that people would be like, oh my God, this is the saddest record ever. But it came out April 6, 2020, when we all were in our feelings and had no idea, no control, you know, and I, I was actually really grateful that I put out a record at that time that sort of gave people permission to feel whatever it was, you know, whether it was scared or longing or, you know, just anything. So, yeah. And now I look back and I'm like, well, the universe had me on that one. You know, they were like, yeah. the timing is right for this, though. So it's, yeah. it's crazy how the timing works on things. You were preparing for something you didn't even know was coming mm -hmm. and you help people get through something that you didn't even know you were going to, you know, that maybe people yeah. leaned on those songs and that music and. And, you know, I always say this and every single time we do this of how important music is and how it gets through 
you know, every single emotion or anything you're going through in life. So I just think it's so ironic looking back at, you know, especially talking to songwriters and trying to get your message out at a time when you had to get creative and be away from people, but you'd already sort of prepared for it in a weird way, you know? Yeah. yeah. It was certainly an interesting time. I, I always wish that and this is like so common, but I wish that we had known how it was going to turn out when we were going into it, which of course you can't. I went up to New York to be with my mom um, so we could quarantine together because I was going to be quarantining alone here and she was going to be alone up there. And I was like, mm. no. So I went up there to be with her. And, you know, it was such a gift because as an adult, I probably wouldn't have had three months in my mother's house, just the two of us. But I, always, you know, I just wish that I wasn't so freaking out, you know, mm -hmm. but, you know, I, I could have just leaned into that time and been like, this is such a gift. I might never have this again with my mom. Um, so yeah, I think that as well for the songs, it was really personally very hard to write during this time. I still wrote a lot, but not as much as I, I usually am like a freak. Like I would write three to five songs a week, easy on my own, not even trying to like go to co-writes. And I was, I was really impacted by the lack of experiences. What I learned is I tend to write in this time of my life, I write where it's like, I went out with my friends one night and then I get home and it's two in the morning and I have to write a song right then because of this thing that just happened. Or, oh, I just went on this beautiful romantic adventure and I'm writing a song like literally while it's happening in my head and then I go home and I immediately write it. So once that was taken away from me, I was like, I feel like I wrote the same song over and over for you know, the entire year. And I'm like, okay, hopefully there'll be a new song coming. <laughs> right, right. It, it was, okay, what are you made of now? You know what I mean? It's yeah, like, right. what's in now? So, but that's the fun part. I mean, but you're right. It's like, don't you wish you knew the ending? Mm -hmm. Maybe you don't want to know the ending to everything. And yeah. that's the whole journey. That's the whole thing. Every single person watching, every single person listening, we can't do that. None of us can. So we've got to be in this together at some and point. And we have to be you know? a moment for that reason too. You know, yeah. There's no reason to freak out. I mean, granted, I do. So not preaching, but you know, the, the only thing we have is right now because yeah, it's already gone and we have no idea what's coming. And I think this year made that so clear to so many people. So yeah. yeah. Well, I'm glad you captured that lesson too. And I really appreciate you sharing it with us. Um, this oh, was supposed to only go about 30 minutes. We're almost 10 minutes over. Thanks to me again. So I, I apologize. <laughs> you. It's probably my fault. <laughs> <laughs> I could just chat with you all night. But let's hear your final song, um, Cold Comfort, you're going to play, right? Yes. Yeah, so this is the uh, title track to Cold Comfort, obviously. I wrote this one as well with my friend Luke Sheets. And I was getting over that same relationship. And I realized, you know, typical me fashion, I was like, oh, I'm starting to feel better. What does it mean? Does it mean the whole relationship wasn't as important as I thought it was? Because how could I just be getting over it, you know? So I had to go into this deep existential thing about that and be like, is it right? Are you doing the right thing? So uh, that's what the song is about. It's called Cold Comfort. Since the day we saw the end Got a whole lot of extra time on my hands Even picked up a little fresh Now I can say, say la vie Best friend's name just slipped my mind You love bread, I'm drinking away. Sister says that I'm doing alright. But it's a cold comfort. When it doesn't hurt to hear your name. And when I don't wonder if you think of me, you feel the same. I've been letting this love burn out. Yeah.
feels it in his lap, burn out slow. Killing my time, letting you go. I keep taking the pain like medicine and moving on, but it's a cold, cold fever. Yeah, it's a cold. Cold Comfort. We are so excited for this latest album that you have out. That was awesome, Ruthie. This whole performance tonight has been spectacular. I cannot thank you enough. Oh, thank you so much. And thank you to Be My and Cat Country and, you know, I are. I'm so excited for Island Hopper. I just can't even tell you when I got that text a couple weeks ago. I was like, oh, yeah. So to be glad. Yeah. And this is good. So it's going to be so much fun. We are going to welcome you with open arms, and, oh, if you, if, and you your go. fans will be too. And I think you made some new fans tonight as well. Yes. So thank you everybody for being here with us. So that's so awesome. We're going to be following all of your renovation plans. Anything you've got going on, you're so talented. The very oh, multi-talented Ruthie you. Collins tonight for songs from the sofa. Also, just to let everybody know, we'll be doing another performance on the third Thursday for July. You can stay tuned to our social media accounts for any kind of up dates and information on that and again island hopper fest is happening september 17th it's going to be hitting captiva downtown fort myers and fort myers beach you can hit up islandhopperfest.com for more information on that so with that we will let everybody go into their thursday evening ruthie again beautiful beautiful face and beautiful yeah. voice right there thank you so much of course good to see you good to see you and thanks everybody for joining we'll catch up with you next time okay everybody have a good safe